always taking action for you. Well, tonight we begin with those protesters taking to the streets, marching to stop Detroit's water shutoff. They were loud and proud, making it known they believe the shutoffs are inhumane. We have team coverage of the day's action for Let's you. Let's kick it off with 7 Action News reporter Jim Kirchner, who was in the middle of it all day long. Jim, you asked the question, can this be effective? How do you define effective? They've certainly gotten notice. This is one of the signs they carried. Are they going to change policy? That remains to be seen. They did draw some star power. The whole world is watching, okay? This story isn't over. The crowd of several hundred bolstered by thousands attending the political conference at Cobo Center. Organizers are nurses in town from across the country. We come all the way to Chicago said, to, to, to let Detroit know fight, fight, that fight. cutting water off is in your way. We got sold out. We got bailed out. We got sold out. Civil disobedience not necessarily the plan. I was told they did not have a Detroit permit, but police let them continue their march through downtown and next to the banks on whom they place blame. The banks should pay. We believe that we need to put a tiny tax on Wall Street who are responsible for causing the economic devastation. Detroit has been home to protests over the decades, but this one on the one-year anniversary of the city going into bankruptcy and still far away from a turnaround. Detroit, America's blackest and poorest city. 42% of the people in Detroit live in poverty. The march went past City Hall, the intended target, where city officials have said water shutoffs have been increased. The city remains in talks about turning its water department into a regional authority with suburban politicians not willing to take on a 40% delinquency rate. So you're calling on the city right now to stop the shutoffs of the families. Exactly. And let them slide. No, not let them slide. Let, let them work out a payment plan. In this crew, few who have lived without water. We did find this 60-something man who was shut off for a week before scraping up 200 bucks to pay up. Well, I borrowed water from my neighbors. That's, that's one thing. They, they uh, fortunately had water. And city officials are back in bankruptcy court on Monday to tell the judge how they intend to help more people with payment plans and assistance. Joanne? Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, emergency manager Kevin Orr's office just minutes ago put out an email, Jim, outlining the help available for people who are having a hard time paying their bills. We'll have that information, of course, on our website, WXYZ.com. Now, as Jim mentioned, joining Detroiters in the crowd today were many with no direct connection to the water war. They happened to be in town for a conference and decided to take up the cause. 7 Action News investigator Jonathan Carlson continues our coverage from Hart Plaza. He's got more on who was actually taking part in this protest today. Jonathan? Yeah, plenty of characters, all kinds of people in that crowd today, all focused on one thing. Water, water. These ladies call themselves Raging Grannies. You're the Raging Grannies? Raging Grannies. They aren't water customers, and their service hasn't been shut off. In fact, they're part of a national environmental and peace group. Why are they here? I feel really bad they, just because they get behind in their bill. And then there's Robin Hood. Well, two of them delivering water and their message. I see it as a humanitarian crisis. Water is a right. And these ladies have no trouble getting water. We're from Gross Point. In this crowd, there were certainly some Detroiters, but everywhere you turned, people from somewhere else. A conference was being held in town, coincidentally, on the same day as the march. The organization, Netroots Nation. Netroots is a, is a conference of progressives. And you can credit them in part for such a large turnout. So how many of you guys came over for this? Uh, this March, it, I heard an estimate that there was about 2,000 people here, and actually there's 2,000 people at the conference. Where are you from? I'm from New York City, Brooklyn, New York. Now, this has attracted people from all over the country, not only because of that conference, but because this has become a national story. We're live downtown. Jonathan Carlson, 7 Action News. Okay, John.